Welcome to Flow with Mildred. I'm so glad you stopped by for this conversation. Now this video is inspired by an incident that happened to me earlier this week. And the incident reminded me of a Bible story and then I had a time of reflection and I was thinking that many times to get to our next level, God will give us an instruction, but that thing may be something that we are afraid of. Are you willing to do it anyway to get to that place that God wants you to be? Or you know God wants you to be in? Or you want to be in? Well, what happened was, before I tell that story, I had a video about deliverance. And in that video, I was in the defense of those who feel like, well, they just can't do deliverance. I was saying, yes, Jesus said we can cast in his name. We can cast out demons. And I believe it. I really believe that any believer who have the faith can do that. But I was mentioning that um, he also said that we can pick up serpents. And if I see a serpent, I'm not picking it up <laughs> because I don't have the faith for that. And we all have our different measures of faith, right? What I feared came upon me. Believe it. <laughs> I was in this early morning cleanup and I got into the living room and um I shifted a curtain behind a chair and I noticed the tip of a tail. And we have a lot of ground lizards and I'm not afraid of those. So I'm like, how did that get in here? But as I thought, my eyes followed the tip up and I realized, oh no, this is a snake. I don't know when last I've seen. Well, I swallowed my scream and I backed out of the living room and I'm like, who can I call? <laughs> I did make a call, but I didn't get the individual. And um, the thoughts start coming to my mind. Well, you were praying earlier that you can tread on serpents and scorpions and every power of the devil and nothing shall by any means harm you. Well, there, go ahead, deal with it yourself. I was like, I was also reminded, yeah, you were also quoting the scripture in Psalms 91 about treading on, on Adder and, and the young lion. Go ahead, deal with it now. I'm like, no, sir, not me. It's going to stay there. It's going to stay right there. <laughs> but I started really feeling that the thoughts are like, no, you, you go deal with it. Deal with it yourself. Come on, get rid of the fear. <laughs> so I started looking for something to, 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 to deal with it. And um, my daughter heard me. She's like, what happened? I'm like, um, come, come and let me tell you. So when I tell her, she's like scared. I'm like, we stood there strategizing. How are we going to get this snake out of the house? When I went back in the living room, I, I decided, I'm mama, I'm the adult, I'm going to do it. Went back in the living room and I could no longer see the tail. I'm like, did it go under the chair? I ain't moving the chair. No, sir. No way. No how. I'm like, stepped out to go in my bedroom. And guess what was waiting for me? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And in order to do that, this snake had to have some sort of intel. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. And to get to my bedroom, he had to get back out from whence it came, cross the concrete um, area, slide up some stairs, and find its way to the outside door, underneath it, find a space to get in. <laughs> and it did. Just that. And it was waiting for me by the time I got there. I'm like, no, not today. No, not today, not today. I started like, come on. I'm like, okay, no, I have to be quiet because it was heading to an area that I'm like, no, my bags are there. <laughs> no. And uh, well, finally, I, I got my daughter to get the key and open the door from the outside and she skedaddled away and I commanded that snake out of my room. I saw it double back on itself and it went out. I threw the thing after it and missed it by a mile and a half. And then I went up behind it and this snake didn't go back down the stairs. Oh no, it went to the edge of the landing and it dived into the grass and disappeared. I'm like, yeah. Right away my mind was, you deal with that spirit of fear. You do not, you're not going to be fearful of this thing. You deal with it. So I, I like commanded the spirit of fear, get out. I quoted scriptures like, mm -mm, I'm going to go about my day and I'm not even going to tremble. Because the last time I saw one, it took days before I stopped trembling. <laughs> I did deal with the fear that, that last time. I, I mean, it crossed my path and I ran back in the house and blah, blah, blah. And I felt God was telling me, no, go back out. And I went out and I prayed, but I trembled all the way. And days after, every time I passed the area, I would tremble. Not, 
not that this week. No, sir. Once I dealt with it, I was cool. But I was reminded of um, the story of Moses. Is I'm going to start from Exodus 4, chapter 2. What's that in your hand? The Lord asked him. Moses answered, a staff. God said, throw it to the ground. He threw it to the ground and it became a snake. Moses ran away from it. So when I, I went back to read that story, I'm like, I don't feel so bad because I know Moses ran. Moses was scared too. Granted, his snake was not the size of mine. His snake was much bigger, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but he ran from it. And sometimes we see these great men of faith. When we really look into this story, we realize, you know, they were human just like us. But they had to make a choice. They had to make a decision. Am I going to trust God? Or am I going to trust this fear? Which one? Then God told Moses, reach out and grab its tail. So he reached out, grabbed it, and it became a staff in his hand. And we know by the time he went back to Egypt, and I think it was the third time now he threw this, because first he had to demonstrate to his people. And then before Pharaoh, he threw it down. You know, Moses was like a professional staff throw a snake pick up <laughs> but we see here Moses had to make a choice he ran that means this thing frightened him but when God said pick it up he had to choose am I going to obey God or not this was preparation this was preparation for his destiny what could God be telling you to do today but you're like I'm scared this I, I don't want to stand before the crowd. I I can't speak to that person. I don't want to attend the application. What if I'm rejected? I, I don't have the know-how. I, I, I'm so scared. I, I, I don't think I can do this. I want to remind you, as 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 tells us, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But you know, we we do feel the emotion of fear as human beings. I mean, even great Moses was afraid of that snake the first time. He had to activate his power. He had to activate his power through what? Obeying what God told him to do. Many of us want success. We want prosperity. We want we want to get to the next level. We want to level up our life. We we want all the great things. But we are not willing to do what it takes to get there. And sometimes it's not necessarily a fearful thing. It's not necessarily a creature. Sometimes it's actually facing someone. Uh, um, and strange enough, I could tell you this. I knew that there was more meaning to that snake being in my, in my presence than just, okay, here is the fear you have to face. I, I don't, I've spoken in my video about the faces of spiritual warfare. One of the faces I mentioned was insects and animals and so forth. I have learned that from my own experience. I've learned that from listening to others who, who dealt with things of spiritual nature. And in that, in that video, I mentioned that um, I have a tendency sometimes that when I see creatures acting odd, or just something out of the ordinary. Like one day I was taking a walk and two cats just rolled out, tangled, fighting one another. We don't have cats. Yeah, they come here every now and then, but we don't have cats. They rolled out, fighting one another. And I was like, where did they, where did they come from? And the thought came, there's going to be a cat fight. The very next day, someone tried to pull me into a cat fight, but I was prepared. <laughs> so I've had incidents like that. And I knew the thought came to me after I dealt with the snake and dealt with the fear. There's going to be some deception going on. That very day, I dealt with two persons trying to deceive me and the next day. So I know sometimes for me, when these things show up, okay, I'm going to have to deal with quite a situation concerning something to do in the natural with, 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 with what these creatures represent. And, um, but the, the fact is, it could be that God is telling you, Apply for that job. But you're just scared. You feel like you don't have all the qualifications. It could be God is telling you, all right, um, approach that person for some matter. Call that person. Do such and such a thing. Face a snake. <laughs> but he, there is a reason. There is a purpose. 
He's trying to get you to activate your power. He's trying to get you to step into the power of obedience. You see, Joshua 1 8 tells us, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. You may observe. You don't just read the book. You don't just, and he was talking about the scriptures up to that point, but we know it's, 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 it's the scriptures altogether. You don't just read it, but you're reading it to observe, to see what's in it, and then to do what you have observed. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. You want good success? Do the word. And that's Old Testament. Let's jump to one of my favorite chap um not chaps my favorite book in the old testament i love nehemiah in the new testament i love james <laughs> and all the others but yeah those are my favorites james 1 22 to 25 tells us but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves do it do do what is written there do what we're learning for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror for he observes himself goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty he's talking about the word perfect law of liberty remember in joshua he talks about this book of the law and continue in it and is not forget not a forgetful hero but a doer of the work this one will be blessed in what he does. And we know when he's talking about the law, he's not talking about the ones that Christ dealt with. He's talking about the, the principles that we observe in the word of God. If you do it, if you look into it, continue in it, do it, you will be blessed in what you do. That, that's the, you want blessings? Here, here is, here is a key. Here is a principle. Here is a way to blessings. Do the word. Many times we look for um, the word we want to hear that we could do. Many times we, we look for, to we listen to all these, these other people. And I, I'm not going to lie. I've been under so much pressure. I've been listening to some people. I'm telling God, you know, I just don't want a positive word. <laughs> I know I probably shouldn't believe it. I'm like, just. Please, I just want something positive. <laughs> Many of us, we, we get under pressure and um, we seek, we get itching ears and we seek for that word we think is the one for us. But what God is telling us, what God is revealing to us, what God is, uh, go and f forgive that person. Um, deal with that anger in your heart. Face your bitterness. Pull out that root. It's hard. Ouch. It means we have to face ourselves. It means we may have to recall some things that are still hurting us. It, it, it means we may have to go before somebody who we still fear. But God is saying, do this. We are living epistles. That's what the Bible tells us. It means that it may not be just quote the scripture and it's okay. It may, it may, it may mean in our life, we need to know what the Holy Spirit is telling us. And be obedient to that also. I can tell you stories. Many stories. Where I had tried just about everything to deal with the situation. And there was just this thought. And it was like. Huh? <laughs> huh? But when, one, when it was obeyed. Because I knew in my heart. Okay. I believe this is you Lord. I knew, I knew it was the Holy Spirit. When it was obeyed. Guess what? That was the solution. That was the solution. I don't know who this is for today, but I'm telling you, you're listening to this, you've got this far, you've gotten this far. There is something you know you need to do and you're afraid. I understand. I understand. But we're going to pray together and we're going to cast out a spirit of fear. And even if you're still trembling, you're going to do this thing and you're going to be all right. You're going to get to the next level. If it's something in the word that you know you've read and you're, you're 
still in some sort of sin and you know you need to deal with it, I pray that today will be the day you let that thing go. You hand it over to God. You confess. You, you open up about it. And do not let it be a noose around your neck. There's a scripture coming to mind that he who hides his sin shall not prosper. Here, we are saying that if you do the word, you prosper. But part of the word is we are told if you hide in your sin, you shall not prosper. But what does the rest of the verse say? But he who confess and forsake, twofold, confess and forsake shall have mercy. What are you willing to do today? Are you willing to do the word? Are you willing to get to your next level? David had to cry out, created me a clean heart, O oh God. He, he knew the sin that he committed. And he had, to, he, had to, he had to come clean. When he was hiding it, oh boy, what, what, what did it cause in his life? The soul shall not depart from yours. That's what the prophet told him. Whatever it is today that God is telling you to do, remember, faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. Uh, there's a scripture too that says, love not in word only, but in deed and in truth. Maybe today that you, you feel that a friendship is falling apart and you think that you can just get the person to just to remember the old. No, check yourself. Is this something you have done? Something you need to do? Do you need to show that, you know, listen, I, I did this and I'm sorry. What are you willing to do to step up to your next level? What is God telling you? What do you need to face? What is challenging you right now? And you, you want to run away from it. <laughs> you want to run away. To be honest, I, I, after feeling that the snake was representing some deceivers that were, coming, that were already in my life, facing them was not easy, you know. But something in me knew. I, I've got to deal with this matter. Or it's going to be a hindrance in my life. In the not too distant future. It was not comfortable. So I know that it may not be comfortable what you have to do. But if you know it is God, he will give you the strength to do it. Remember, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. So I'm going to pray. Abba Father, who art in heaven, we praise you. Your name is great. You are greatly to be praised. I come before you and I am asking that you would help us hear clearly your will for our life. And where there is fear, I pray to God that you step in and help us to cast that spirit out. It's not something you gave us, but to walk in power, in love, and in the sound mind. Remind us again that we can trust in your love. I pray for the one listening to this video who right now, they know what they need to do. But they are afraid that God, they will know, is it, as the psalmist wrote, what time I am afraid, I will trust in you. That they will trust in you and they will make that step forward. Lord, for the one who is like waiting for a word from you, I pray that in this moment you will speak clearly and tell them this is the way, walk in it. Be so clear about the direction that they need. Those who thought they heard you but are now unsure, confirm it. Have mercy upon us all. Help us to rise up to that level you want us to be in this time and in this season. And I praise you. I thank you. I glorify your name. You're so great. Thank you, Father, for all things. I magnify your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Are you willing to do what God says to step up to your next level? I hope you are. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> Until next time. Bye. <laughs>